In the murky depths of our lakes and rivers, there is a creature. A creature so mighty that its very presence has the potential to offset the entirety of an ecosystem. A creature so destructive that it leaves billions of dollars of damages in its impressive wake. But what is this heinous monster? So this is the zebra mussel. Okay, we know what you're thinking. This probably isn't the misshapen monster you had in mind. But the effect that this minuscule mollusk has on the entirety of the ocean is immense. But before we illustrate its vast effects, we need to understand where and how this creature ended up on our shores. Native to the Caspian Sea, it's believed that the zebra mussel made their way to the U.S. via Eurasian International Freighters, living in ballast water, which was then dumped at the ship's final destination. It was first discovered in the United States in Lake St. Clair in Michigan in 1988, and the striped invader has since spread by the millions throughout the Great Lakes region and beyond. This spread is facilitated by the fact that the tiny mollusks will latch onto anything solid and are often transported to new areas, courtesy of transient, solid aquatic objects. Nonetheless, the question remains, how can these seemingly innocuous creatures create damage so disproportionate to their size? Well, according to the Invasive Species Advisory Committee, an invasive species is any alien species whose introduction does or is likely to cause economic, environmental, or human harm. And to that end, the zebra mussel embodies an invasive species in the purest sense. Their primary negative effects can be broken down into three categories, biological, industrial, and human. From a biological standpoint, the presence of massive amounts of zebra mussels is detrimental to the surrounding ecosystem and has the capacity to offset the existing balance in numerous ways. This graph, created by the Environmental Protection Agency, gives an overview of the effect of the zebra mussel on aquatic phytoplankton. Zebra mussels are known to consume massive amounts of plankton, a critical food source of the aquatic ecosystem, and without plankton, the energy available of food webs is reduced and depletes the fish population. As a result, the commercial and recreational fishing industries are negatively impacted. On top of that, a mass presence of zebra mussels means the removal of algae from the water column, causing a further movement of energy and thus a negative net effect on the ecosystem. From an industrial perspective, the invasive mollusks often attach themselves onto man-made structures, including water intake valves, thus permanently damaging the pipes. This causes damage estimated to be well into the billions, creating a sizable economic conundrum for relevant industries. Furthermore, it's been reported on Lake Erie that numerous boat engines have overheated due to colonies of zebra mussels clogging and cooling the water inlet. Swimmers also have to wash their feet because the sharp-edged mussel shells along the shore can be a serious hazard. The sum of these challenges create formidable challenges for boaters and water enthusiasts alike. This brings us to our ever-important question. What can you do to prevent the spread of this heinous and hateful monster? As a principle, always inspect and clean your boat thoroughly before and after leaving all waters. How this is most successfully accomplished, though, depends on what type of boat or aquatic equipment you may have. If it's a sailboat, check the centerboard and bilgeboard wells. If it's a keelboat, check the rudder post area. If you have a trailer, check the axles, runners, lights, and rollers. For all other boating equipment, check the anchors, water skis, or other tow lines. If you're a fisherman, remember to wash and dry your tackle, fishing lines, downriggers, and other equipment to kill harmful species that are not always visible. If none of these apply to you, but you still want to do your part in stopping the spread of the zebra mussel, visit protectyourwaters.net for additional information on what you can do to get involved. Remember, the future of our lakes is in your hands. Clean your boat, save your lake, and don't be a carrier. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem.